program was filmed at the 9th Annual Supply Chain and Logistics Summit in Dallas, Texas. I am pleased to welcome Editor-in-Chief Russell Goodman. Plan, source, make, and deliver using the theory of constraints. Well, joining us to speak about that is Dale Hu, Chief Technology Officer at AGI Goldratt Institute. Dale, welcome. Thank you, Russell. Dale, for anybody who's not entirely familiar with AGI Goldratt uh, Institute, uh, what is that? Briefly tell us, what does it do? Well, actually, it was formed in 1986, and it really has been the source of development of what's called theory of constraints, which is really a process of looking at organizations as systems and addressing them in that manner. All right, let's turn now to our topic, and that is how does the theory of constraints address the processes of plan, source, make, and deliver in the supply chain? Well, first of all, TOC looks at a supply chain as a system of systems governed by cause and effect. And as a system, TOC recognizes that plan, source, make, and deliver are not independent processes, but are actually interdependent processes that must be integrated into an overall planning process. And, and secondly, for the results of the plan to actually materialize, execution in the supporting areas needs to be managed so as to maintain alignment with that overall plan. Well, let's talk about how does the TOC integrate and align a supply chain with its supporting processes? Well, to do that, we probably should really first start with clarifying the objective, mm. okay? And, and if you look at effective and efficient supply chains, they must be responsive to the needs of the customer, considering issues like lead time, delivery, availability, price, while lowering their overall delivered costs and improving their return on investment. This is what we refer to as demand-driven performance. When you think about integrating and aligning, it's sometimes easier to go back to basics. And when you think about a supply chain, it's probably best analogous to a physical chain in that it has links and linkages. And depending upon how much of the supply chain you're actually engaged with, the links would represent various businesses, organizations, or functions. For example, they could represent retail, wholesale, manufacturing, tier one, two, three suppliers, third party logistics, marketing, sales, planning, transportation, and so on. Um, when it comes to the linkages, they're really much more governed by the policies that the links use, the measures they use, and what basis they use for information exchange. Then the resulting linkages themselves will enable either a greater degree or a lesser degree of organizational alignment. And the interesting thing is, the more misalignments there are organizationally, the greater the variability is in the performance of the links within the supply chain. Well, it leads to my next question. What types of policies and measures tend to uh, lend themselves to the, the, the greatest uh, organizational misalignments? Okay, Th those tend to be the <clears throat> policies and measures that really look at the links within the chain as if they were independent as opposed to independent, interdependent links configured to deliver a certain level of performance. Um, for example, if you were to think about resource utilization, that often results in work being batched, information being batched, which enables a particular link in that chain or a particular resource appear to be performing well where work and information flow is then delayed in arriving to other resources or other links in the chain. Um, another example might be resource utilization, where that tends to try to emphasize fully utilizing resources in a chain as if they were the only link in a chain. It's really the, the effects of those types of policies and measurements that result in a time delay in delivery. And with that time delay is a corresponding increase in work in process, longer lead times, late deliveries, and more expediting. In the end, the real result is there's more variability in delivery performance downstream and more variability in demand upstream. Do you find that all of these organizational misalignments that we've been talking about need to be corrected in order for there to be any significant improvement in the supply chain? No, you see, the most significant impact on supply chain performance really is the effects of variability, whether the variability is in delivery performance or it's in demand. Now, 
variability is what causes the expediting, the out of stocks, for fill rates, the overstocks, the longer lead times, late deliveries, lost sales, more overtime, and premium freight, and a number of other effects on the, on the business. And that really leaves us with two courses of actions. Okay? One is to focus our efforts on addressing variability, and the other is really to focus our efforts on nullifying its effects. Now, given the fact that it's very unlikely we will ever totally eliminate variability, organizations are often better off starting first by nullifying the effects of variability and then using that information to then identify and address the subsequent causes. Addressed in this way, supply chains actually get the best improvements in their performance. What do you think is required in the planning process to nullify the effects in this demand and or supply variability that you've been talking about? First, it's important to recognize and to acknowledge that the most significant effect of variability, whether that variability is in supply or in demand, is a time delay in satisfying demand, whether that is from stock or direct delivery. The second thing is to ensure that the actual planning process itself accounts for these time delays to a sufficient level of detail to enable execution management to effectively adjust priorities in workflow. And then the third thing is to ensure that the adjustments in workflow priorities are based on actual to planned movement and the resulting impact that has on delivery performance outcomes. When you put it all together, I guess what you really come down to is that planning and execution management must be an integrated process with the appropriate software tools available that enable the supply chain to operate as an integrated system, or in other words, as a supply chain. Dale, you just described a planning and execution management technology. Final question, does that technology exist today? Yes. And if somebody would really be interested in, in finding out more of the benefits of that technology, I'd be more than happy to address that issue with them. Well, valuable information. Thank you very much for meeting with us today. Thank you. Well, that's Dale Hu, AGI Goldratt Institute, and speaking with us today about plan, source, make, and deliver using the theory of constraints. Thanks for watching.